and do it again. So that I, I stop sharing. Now I try again. Can you see now? Yes. Uh, yes, now we can see. Yes. Now, now you can see. Okay, okay. Good, good. Okay, so shall we start? Yeah. Yes. Go on. Good, good. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for invitation. Yeah, so I would like to talk about this um, Langmuir periodic orbit. So that's one one of this uh, classical periodic orbit in the helium problem. So this is a uh, joint work with uh, with uh, Kai Tilleberg and uh, Martin Schwingenheuer. <clears throat> so yeah, so we are we are looking at the planar helium problem. So we are just in the plane, <clears throat> and we take out the origin of the plane. Since, since at the origin there is there is the, the the nucleus, so there are two two protons um, at the origin. And what we um, also, and now we, we have two, as in the helium, we have two electrons. Um, so our configuration space consists of uh, um, two, two uh, electrons, which should not be in the nucleus. So it's C star times C star but they should also not uh, collide with each other. So we take out the diagonal. So the diagonal is when the two uh, electrons collide. So this is forbidden. And then we have the, the cotangent bundle of uh, this configuration space as a cotangent bundle of uh, the product of two uh, C without origin take out the diagonal. This is our phase space for the planar helium problem. <clears throat> and then the Hamiltonian is, so So it's the following. So we have the Q1 and Q2. These are the positions of the two um, electrons. And we have the two uh, momenta. <clears throat> and so what we have is the kinetic energy. So we have the of both uh, uh, electrons. Then we have, um, so the, the nucleus is attracting them. So the potential consists first of uh, um, minus two times the distance to the nu nucleus. So it's minus two because we have uh, the helium has uh, uh, two protons in the kernel. But then the, the two electrons are interacting as well so we get this uh, third term in the potential namely um the one divided by the distance of the two um electrons <clears throat> so so this the third term this is this is kind of the interaction term <clears throat> so so this this third term this makes the problem yeah depending on your taste uh, interesting or terrible or what whatever you think so so if, if you would not have the interaction term we would have just um, two uh, uncoupled um, Coulomb problems. <clears throat> but thanks to this interaction, the whole problem becomes uh, more interesting. <clears throat> and so, so there are symmetries for this um, Hamiltonian. And what are the symmetries? So first, we can, um, we can rotate so that we have a rotational invariance. So we have, but we have to rotate um, both electrons simultaneously. We, we, what we cannot do is we cannot we cannot just rotate one uh, single electron. So we have just O2 symmetry and not O2 times O2. But then what we also have we have a set two symmetry. We can interchange the two particles, the two electrons, <clears throat> and these two symmetries commute. Um, so and they all they are all acting as they, they are all um, symplectic symmetries so we have even a moment map so if you look at the 
continuous symmetries, the, the SO2, if you just uh, rotate, then what is the moment map? So the moment map is the total angular momentum. So the total angular momentum is, is a preserved quantity for this um, for this problem, but we, we only have the total angular momentum. So what we don't have, so the individual angular momentum, so each electron has an individual angular momentum. These are not preserved, just the, the sum is preserved. So, so the, the individual momentum would be preserved if we would ignore the interaction, but this, but because of the interactions, we, we, we cannot just rotate one electron and we, and the other we keep fixed. This is not possible. So we have to, to uh, rotate both electrons simultaneously. Uh, so the, the, the whole problem is, so we have symmetry, but we have no, also not so much symmetry. So, so in, in particular, what, what we don't have, um, we don't have this, uh, it, it's not a completely integrable system so the, so the phase space is not uh, foliated by uh, by this arnold leoville tori right? um but on the other hand we, we, we also have symmetries so the periodic orbits are also not not isolated <clears throat> so 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 it's kind of a of an interesting uh Problem, so, so a funny problem. So, so we have we have a bit symmetry, but not too much. So, so, so and and especially this is uh, is quite different from the from the hydrogen atom, where, where you have all where you have the where you have so much symmetry, and, and you have all this uh, Arnold Liouville Tori. Right? So so we don't have them here, and, and this since the beginning of of uh, quantum mechanics. So this made made this problem uh, quite quite. Different from uh, from hydrogen. So, so af after you quantize hydrogen, you wanted to uh, to quantize uh, helium. But now, now a lot of new um, phenomenons appear in helium, which you don't have in uh, in hydrogen. <clears throat> and so we have this uh, we have these symmetries, and so we have uh, all these uh, symplectic symmetries, and in particular we can look at involutions so so maybe maybe the the simplest involution would be we just interchange the two particles <clears throat> uh, so, so it is a two factor but actually this this is uh, not so interesting to look at for the following reason because um, if, if you look at the symplectic involutions we then want to look at the fixed point set of these uh, symplectic involutions, and if we just interchange the two, um, if we just interchange the two um, electrons, so the fixed point set would be the diagonal, and this is precisely where where, the, where our Hamiltonian is singular, and so, so we have we have kicked out the diagonal. So therefore, so for that reason, we don't want to look at uh, the the involution which just comes from a particle interchange. But what makes it more interesting is we can combine uh, the particle interchange involution with uh, involution on O2. And on O2, we have basically two involutions. We have a point reflection or a, a reflection at the line. So if we do it with point reflection, it's just as we, we interchange uh, Q1 and Q2 and every, everything gets a minus. So the position gets the minus and the momentum get the minus so, th so that's one 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 involution one can look at and the other involution is uh so when one does not look uh, one does not combine particle interchange with uh, with uh, point reflection but with the reflection at the line so this one can write as a complex conjugation so so one interchanges the particles and then always uh, puts a uh, Bar a complex to conjugate. <clears throat> Good. So and so so the second one, this this will be uh, important for for Langmuir. <clears throat> the, the first one, the first one actually is, is uh, rather trivial, as we will uh, discuss first. <clears throat> so let let's let's see first what happens um, with uh, the particle interchange and point reflection. So so let's let's see what what happens there. So we have as a q1 is just minus q2. So we 
we call this variable now q we, we, we can we can forget one particle if, if you understand if you if you understand one electron we we also understand the other one we just have to to reflect the the first one and the same we do for the for the um momentum <clears throat> so now we have we have uh, our our Hamiltonian. So, so the, I, I wrote down once more that the, the Hamiltonian of the planar helium problem. So this kinetic, this kinetic part, and then we have the the potential consisting of the three terms. So, so the the Coulomb potential from the nucleus, and then f finally the, the the interaction term. But now, if we um, plug in uh, our um, uh, we have just one p, so, so we, we are just left with one p square, and then also the the potential part becomes very easy. <clears throat> so we have uh, so q one is q two. So we have here here we have minus four divided by q, and then here we have the interaction term, but we have uh, q minus minus q. So this we divide by two q. So we have minus four plus one half. I think this is minus seven over two divided by q. So, so what we are, what we are left is just um, a Coulomb problem, a Coulomb problem with some, uh, yeah, some kind of a strange charge, uh, seven over two. But of course, uh, this we know how to solve this. Uh, we learn all of this we know thanks to to kepler <clears throat> so uh, for for this for this uh, in for this special case we can just um uh, so so the, we have just the solution of the coulomb problem which are the ellipses and especially so this was already considered by bohr this is we can take just a circle <clears throat> so so um one electron is just moving on the circle around the nucleus and then the other electron is just always um, on the opposite side. So, so that was uh, this this orbit. This was actually uh, considered by Bohr as kind of a ground state for the for the helium atom. So, so, for, so Bohr all, always went for uh, first first in Bohr's model. He went for for circles. So it's, a, it's kind of kind of fun, funny if you if you go back to the hi history. So then. For, for, in time of Aristotle, so there were the, the circles. The circles were on the heaven, so the the, the planets were the, were moving on circles, and on the on the Earth there were lines. So the particles on the so stones fall down on lines. But now in for Bohr, the circles are in the atom. But then it was a uh, Sommerfeld, uh, so who already for the hydrogen atom who who's, who uh, figured out that it's also good to look at ellipses sometimes and then also so this was also considered so Sommerfeld and then Heisenberg in his student years looked at the ellipses and then Vanier so so you can also look at the example of a two of an ellipse so so one electron just moves on an ellipse around the nucleus and then the other electron is always uh, so it's you always reflect at the origin, and then you get the second electron. Good, and yeah, so this this is the the problem. Um, the just for uh, if, if you look at the point reflection, <clears throat> and now we want to look at the 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 for for Langmuir, it's. Um, we uh, have particle interchange and uh, complex conjugation or a reflection at the line. So we do the same thing as we did before. So uh, we, uh, we, uh, um, we, we only need to understand one electron and then the other one is, is given. And so we, we just uh, use one variable for one q and we use one p and then let's see what happens with with our hamiltonian so our this is this is our hamiltonian once more so we have um the um kinetic energy and then we have all the the potential energy and now we we, we plug in 
uh, for for this for this symmetry. So we again we have now just one uh, one p as a p square. And but now for the potential is more interesting. So for the potential is more interesting. So um, we have uh, so we have still for the interaction with the nucleus. This is uh, four divided by q <clears throat> as as before. But the, in, the the interaction term this this becomes uh, more exciting because now we have this complex conjugation, and then if, you, if we plug in the complex conjugation, uh, we get here uh, two times the imaginary value of Q. So so, so this this is a the end of the this Langmuir potential. So I, this is. I'm not sure if if so. So people in Barcelona, they are, you are studying a lot of um, singular Hamiltonian systems. I'm not sure if this reminds you of of anything of the of the singular systems you you uh, you, you usually study. Yes, this would be a B two probably. So maybe this uh, is a B two. B two, uh, yeah. in the in the sense of our now thesis. Yeah. When you consider some powers, because it doesn't have a logarithm, this Hamiltonian. Yeah. Then it doesn't intermingle. So here the singular set will be Q equal to zero. Yeah. And it doesn't, and it's like if you look at the expression that you that you have here, it doesn't inter intermingle the Q and the P. So it's it's a this would be a V2 function according to the language of Jonathan. Uh, well, according to Jeff Scott, Jonathan Weitzman, Victor mm -hmm. Guillemin, Neva Miranda. Good. Good. Yeah, right. Right. So ah, so this would be a V2. Jonathan, do you agree? <laughs> well, I don't know. This is like, good, he's good. there probably saying yes, but we don't hear him. <laughs> yeah. It looks like okay, V2. Okay. It looks like V2 to me. Good, good. good. Okay. I so, agree with everything. You agree? You, you okay. agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, B is changing the symplectic form rather than the potential, but yeah. one may be able to play off one versus the other. Anyway, yeah, no, it's very, it's, it's, yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, right. So, so may, may, maybe when one can understand more about this when, when you when you look when you really look from them from from the singularities. So, so I, I found this quite a, quite a funny singularity, which which pops up quite quite naturally <clears throat> but it's this is now a this is now a, a, a problem which is yeah Kepler I don't think Kepler could solve this <clears throat> so um actually and, can I ask can yeah I ask maybe just a very naive question yes uh, what if you study the three body problem right then it's almost the same thing except the signs are a little different uh, do you run into the same thing, or does the fact that the signs that, that you now have are an attractive interaction between the two electrons completely change everything? Ah, uh, uh, you could uh, if if you if you if you would have you could could here have just the minus sign. This you, right, you but, could, but do you actually get an orbit that way, or does it fly off? Right? Presumably, you're going to tell us that you get uh, anyway. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, no, just, that's a, that's because there have been point. some nice solutions of the three body problem. And so I right. wonder whether there's any, right, these, these things due to Alain Chansignet and to uh, Chris Moore and uh, that's, that's a good point. So, so, so where they have these figure eights. And this is kind of, so I actually never knew about that you could do this in the helium atom. And all of this is a sign change. But of course, that can, can turn a stable orbit into an unstable one. So anyway, yeah, yeah. I'm, just putting, I'm just, yeah, I'm just curious. No, uh, that, uh, I'm yeah, I'm curious too. Uh, uh, yes, yes, you, you as a uh, uh, that would be fine, fine to to put here a minus and. Uh, but do you still get a stable orbit then? That's invariant yeah. under that symmetry. So, for instance, what happens to this Bohr orbit if now the electrons attract instead of? Ah, uh, uh, for, for the for the Bohr for the Bohr orbit. For yeah, for the Bohr yeah. for the right for the Bohr orbit. You 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 would you would there you would just get now a. There we have here divided by the norm of Q, then we would get minus five divided by Q. And this would still be is this would still be a capital. So it problem. still works. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This works. Is this yeah, okay. Uh, if, I, mean, if, I, I, I know nothing about this. So this if you use the first if you use the first symmetry, if you if you wanted 
invariant on the on the, the point reflection, then it works. Well, but but here here the Langmuir problem um, because this this is kind of uh, yeah this is kind of funny potential. Uh, so so if if you here to make a minus sign, uh, maybe we maybe at the end of the talk we know better. Yeah, okay, let me not interrupt with, Go with ahead, the min sorry. minus sign. But <clears throat> okay, but 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 you definitely you you could you could put here minus sign. Okay, so so let's let's refer to this as our Langmuir potential, and and that this this is the this is the this is our now Langmuir Hamiltonian. So, so this is now just a, uh, so so we have now just a, a four dimensional phase space after after because we just need to to uh, understand one electron, then we understand the second one. So and um, yeah, and now we want so actually Langmuir Langmuir found there periodic orbit namely what he found is as a is this so so it, so so one electron is doing like this and the other so so, so you have to reflect everything at the at the x axis so the other one is doing like this go back and forth but uh, so so there are it's they're always if you want one q1 then you have to reflect at the x axis then you get q2 and vice versa so, so at the end, what we really have to find is Q1, and then Q2 is, you know, by reflection. But so, and what what Longmuir figured out numerically that such an orbit exists, and what what I I want to uh, do at the end, I want would like to give some kind of uh, analytic argument why why this Longmuir orbit exists but uh, before doing this i would like to put this longmore orbit into a bit more uh, perspective <clears throat> uh, namely this longmore orbit is, is kind of a, what i would call a, a double break orbit and so, so i would like to yeah to discuss this first a bit more in uh, symplectic terms and so first what, what are what are break break orbits and then uh, we need double break <clears throat> so uh, for for break orbits we need real symplectic manifold so what is a real symplectic manifold a real symplectic manifold is triple so we have a symplectic can, can i ask a question yes yes please in your so in the in, sorry, in yeah. the picture you you show us, I took out my camera because apparently I have bad internet connection. To it. Uh, yes, uh, you have like this would correspond, in, let's say in, in the in the sense of dynamical systems, we have three orbits here. You see this point in the middle as a point in the orbit or not, or you just it, put this the point in the middle that you highlighted. Oh, is the, a, the, the, the point in the middle is the nucleus. Okay, okay, but the orbits so are these the, two the, orbits. The, the, nu the nucleus attracts but the, these two um um they are um it's attracting and they are uh, rejecting each other so, okay so the orbit is this these two parts that if you compactify you can think it's a periodic orbit that's what you mean yeah uh, right right okay. uh, so 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 both okay. go, go back and forth and the other okay. like this back okay. and forth uh, for, for for all for every yeah, for all time. Okay. Back and forth. Okay. Perfect. And, but we only have to find one. If we, if we, also you have one, one by the symmetries that you show us these involutions, you find the other one. Right. Right. So, so what we have to find is Q one. Q one. Okay. And Q one. Q one is then a solution of the of this Langmuir Hamiltonian. And then, if you have Q one, we reflect, and then we have an actual periodic orbit in the helium problem. Okay. Okay. Very nice. This makes me think a bit of Cedric's uh, thesis, yeah. but I leave this to the end. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, that, right. So, so, um, if you compactify this, it looks like you have uh, really a singular periodic orbit with, with marked points. Well, then dynamically, it's it's not a periodic orbit because you go back and forth. But the picture yeah. would be like a periodic orbit with two marked points. Yes. So it looks a little bit like these periodic orbits of Cedric. Maybe yeah, in the B2 yeah, yeah. case, yeah, yeah. Uh, you would get these kind of orbits. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Good, good. Yeah, no, no, it's, I think it's, yeah, I think this. 
Okay. We can so, maybe interpret this. Okay, very nice. Thank you. So, so now to to first, I would like to discuss a bit break orbit, and so so then. So for break orbit, I need a real symplectic manifold. So, so it was a real symplectic manifold. So you all know symplectic manifold, but then we have a third structure, namely we have an antisymplectic involution. So antisymplectic involution is just as is in involution and um, the symplectic form, if you pull back is minus the symplectic form. So of, co of course, why is called real? So, so the, so you have the example of complex complex conjugation if you take uh, cn and the standard symplectic form and complex conjugation this is a this is a, a antisymplectic involution and the fixed point set the fixed point set of this antisymplectic involution this this is done is this is the, are then the, the reals <laughs> so so that's why it's called real so i i'm i'm not sure do, do you all do you in this b in the b world is there already some real version of the b world Yeah, may maybe I well, I, I, yeah. I guess like semi locally, yes, but what you're asking is like global diffeomorphism. So I'm right. I guess like I mean, you could like uh, ask for a stronger version. I mean, you could ask for like a global um, diffeomorphism as well in the be symplectic manifold. Yes, yes, but I think that you need because of this anti symplectic involution. And also because of the Hamiltonian that you showed us, it's more B2. It's, it's more maybe. even dimensional. I, I don't know. The, yes, the symmetries, yeah. the symmetries, I don't know. Jonathan, what do you think? I don't know. It looks yeah. like because of the yeah, symmetries, maybe we need to think of B2. I don't know. Yes. It's a very I, interesting example. Good, good. Okay, so, so I'm... Yeah, maybe there is also some some B interpretation of this, but as I for real symplectic manifold is just this, and then uh, so what what you, what you always have is you can look at the fixed point set of this antisymplectic involution, and this fixed point set is always a Lagrangian submanifold. For example, if you take C n and complex conjugation, so the fixed point set is R n. This is this is Lagrangian, but uh, it it could be empty. So for, so for example, if you take uh, S two and then the anti antipodal map, this is also antisymplectic involution. Then the fixed point set is empty. Or, but, or, or if you take reflection at the equator, and then it's the equator, so then it's then it's Lagrangian. So, so I'm not sure if if you allow if if the empty set in your convention is like is you you are allowed to call the empty set a Lagrangian or not. But uh, so maybe empty Lagrangian man, uh, submanifold. This is this fixed point set. Mm. And now what what is what is. Uh, now we, we we additionally need a Hamiltonian, and the Hamiltonian should be invariant. So so the Hamiltonian is is invariant, and but the symplectic form is anti-invariant. So what happens with the Hamiltonian vector field? So the Hamiltonian vector field. So this is defined like this. So so it's defined via the Hamiltonian and the symplectic form. This is invariant. This is anti-invariant. So the the Hamiltonian vector field will also be anti-invariant so we have rho star if you the pullback of the hamiltonian vector field under the anti-symplectic involution will be minus the hamiltonian vector field and this this is a kind of of interesting dynamically since if you have if you have this structure then you can you can look at this this uh, break orbits so so what's a break orbit so break orbit this is first just it's first just a chord. So we have this this L. L is L is the fixed point set of the antisymplectic involution. So, so let's suppose it's not empty. So so then it's it's Lagrangian. And we can look at the at the chords from from this uh, from this Lagrangian back to it. So so this is just as a it's a, it's it's a map from so tau is the period. Uh, from from the interval to to m, so we start and end in in the Lagrangian, and we uh, we propagate. Uh, so, so the derivative of z is is given by this this Hamiltonian 
vector field. Good. And now if now so so let's see a picture. So 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 this is this is this is this uh, um, this core. So so we start here at the Lagrangian, and then we flow with the Hamiltonian vector field, and then we end up again in the Lagrangian. But because our Lagrangian is now the fixed point set of the antisymplectic involution, so we can reflect the whole thing. So we re reflect the whole thing, and and now we now we go back in time. So, so we go back in time, but th th this is fine because the 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 Hamiltonian vector field is also is also anti invariant. <laughs> so we go back, and then we we are, we are we are coming back here at the at the initial point. So we get the periodic orbit, and so so this this is called a this is called a break orbit, and the whole thing is called symmetric periodic orbit so, so so these symmetric periodic orbits they have some some kind of both features so open and closed strings so they're kind of open strings because they go from the lagrangian to the lagrangian and they are also they have also features from closed strings because they are they are uh, periodic orbits <laughs> so they also have two two indices so, so they have a maslow index for for a uh, for a chord, and they have a, a mass of the Conley Sender index for a, as a periodic orbit. <clears throat> yeah. So, so these, these are these are these break orbits, and so so these break orbits they so so why are they actually called break orbits? So so they we go back a bit to the history, and so so this is by Seifert, <clears throat> and uh, well, namely they have a very special form if you look at mechanical hamiltonian so what is mechanical hamiltonian so we can start with with so our our uh, configuration space is just remaining manifold um so, so for example for the longmore problem this would be <clears throat> there's just open subset of uh, c <clears throat> and we have a potential as smooth potential a smooth uh, a map from the configuration space to R, and then our Hamiltonian, our Hamiltonian is is uh, on, on the phase space on the cotangent bundle of N. So it's uh, it's just a kinetic and energy plus a mechanical um, uh, potential energy. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's that's called mechanical Hamiltonian. <clears throat> and now for in for this problem, you have a very natural anti-symplectic involution namely what you can do is you can uh, change p by minus p so th so this is this is this anti anti-symplectic involution so so we ju you just uh, uh, switch every fiber a p to minus p so you keep q and switch p to minus p and then if you, if you look at this at this uh, the, at this hamiltonian this is this is invariant under this so so um so, so the, if you if you have more general problems, if you have, for example, if you have a, if you want to model magnetic field, if you have magnetic Hamiltonian, then usually it will not be it will not not be invariant anymore in, under this involution. Because if you want to model uh, um, velocity dependent forces, then you you twist the kinetic energy, and that, this makes it not invariant anymore. But if you if you're just mechanical, just a kinetic and potential energy, then you have this this invariance under this this uh, very uh, easy antisymplectic involution. And what what is the fixed point set of of this antisymplectic involution? So the fixed point set yeah is just a zero section. So so this we can identify with uh, with the configuration space. <clears throat> now we have um, the other thing the the Hills region. <clears throat> so we um, because our our energy is preserved. So we look at energy hypersurface. We fix some. Um, some uh, real number and we look at the premage of uh, this real number under h so this is our energy hypersurface so this is hypersurface in the in the cotangent bundle of n in the phase space <clears throat> and then we have so we have the foot point projection from uh, 
from the face space to the configuration space or on the cotension bundle to it to the base <clears throat> yeah we, we just uh, forget about the momentum <clears throat> and then the the hills the hills region is is the the shadow of our energy hypersurface under this foot point projection so it's a subset of the configuration space and because because of our if you have just mechanical hamiltonian our our uh our Hamiltonian is just the kinetic energy plus potential energy, and the kinetic part is always non-negative. So we can also uh, alternatively define the sales region as the sublevel set of the potential. So the, the, the energy is C, but the potential should be less than or equal C, because then you can add some non-negative uh, kinetic part. So this is this Hills region. And now uh, that the boundary, the boundary of the hills region, is a interesting interpretation because uh, so the for this mechanical Hamiltonian, the the p variable, the momentum, uh, is just dual to the velocity, and at the boundary, at the boundary of the hills region, <clears throat> um, the the um, the potential that the momenta is zero so the velocity is zero so, so this means that the boundary these these are the so-called zero velocity curves <clears throat> so, so at, at the boundary you will if, if you if your particle hits the boundary it will stop for a moment but you still have acceleration usually so so, so you will not you will not stay forever but for a for a moment you you stop there at the boundary <clears throat> and that that's that's uh, that's why, why this term break orbit comes from namely if you look at break orbit in this uh, special example in a special example then then it's it's just like this so so, so i i i i draw now this break orbit in configuration space so so it's uh, in phase space we have we have additional variable namely we have the, the variable from we keep also the velocity or the momentum <clears throat> And so, so in configuration space, it just looks like this. It goes back and forth, and then, then here, uh, um, here at the zero velocity curve, this is this is the intersection. This is the intersection with the with the fixed point set of the antisymplectic involution. Namely, the fixed point set of the antisymplectic involution is just the, uh, where where the velocity is zero. The, p goes to minus p. So the fixed point set is where p is zero. <clears throat> And and so, so the break orbit just goes back and forth and and and, and stops here. There's a zero velocity curve and goes back here again. Zero velocity back again and so on. Um, good. Okay. And now what is double break orbit? Um, uh, and now sorry, first first uh, let's um, make look a bit at more general involution. Uh, so this was before this was this involution was considered by Seifert, just uh, p goes to minus p, and but for for the long muir we also need need a, a more another one, namely what we can do is um, if we if we have any if we have on configuration space we have any smooth involution if we have a smooth involution on configuration space, <clears throat> and we get um, a symplectic involution this induces symplectic involution on the <clears throat> on phase space as as usually if, if you have a if you have smooth map uh, between manifold then this induces a smooth map between cotangent bundle <clears throat> and <clears throat> this commutes this commutes with this uh, ciphered involution with, just with uh, uh, mapping p to minus p and so, so you have a symplectic involution commuting with an anti-symplectic involution. So, so the, the the product itself is an involution which is anti-symplectic again. So I call this uh, row I, and the 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 fixed point set of row I. This is this is this is also a Lagrangian, but it's now it's now the conormal bundle it's the conormal bundle of the fixed point set of i so i, I is the involu is the smooth involution configuration space this has this sets itself a fixed point set this is a submanifold of n and then if you look at the the conormal bundle the conormal bundle is a lagrangian and this is the the fixed point set of this involution row i 
Good. And now, I, for the long mirror orbit, we need a bit more. So we have double real symplectic manifold. What is double real symplectic manifold? Now we have just we have row one and row two, and the row one and row two are two anti-symplectic involutions, and they should commute with each other. So if you have two uh, commuting anti-symplectic involutions, <clears throat> then uh, yeah, so so their product then is itself is is a symplectic involution. <clears throat> So that, that's what we call double real symplectic manifold. And now if you have double real symplectic manifold, then you we can uh, look at yeah, double break orbit. Double break orbit is, so we have now two fixed point sets. We have a fixed point set of row one and we have fixed point set of row two. These are two Lagrangians. <clears throat> And because the, the anti-symplectic involutions, they commute with each other. So, for example, L1 is invariant under row 2. It's not pointwise invariant. It's not the fixed point set of row 2. But row 2 maps L1 to L1. And vice versa, row 1 maps L2 to L2. It keeps L2 is invariant under row 1, and L1 is invariant under row 2. And uh, a double break orbit is now a chord from the first Lagrangian L1 to the second Lagrangian L2. And this, uh, so pictorially, it looks like this. So, so, so yeah, so we, we go from L1, follow the Hamiltonian vector field, and we end up in L2. But now, uh, now we can use uh, both reflections. So, for example, we can reflect at this double break orbit at L2 at the, using row two. Then we get up to here, and this this bit here. This is now a break orbit for L1 for row one or L1 or row one. And if we we could also reflect at with row one, so we reflect this. Then we, we, we have also this bit, and then we have a break orbit for L2. And what, whatever you do, then we, we can, ref from the break orbit, we get periodic orbit. So uh, if you have double break orbit, you just need one quarter. So, so if you have this bit, then the rest is uh, determined by this bit. And the long more, uh, so, so the long more orbit is actually a, a double, a double break orbit, <clears throat> namely, as a, let's let's maybe let's uh, once more uh, recall this uh, Hamiltonian. So so because now we just you need one one electron. We are we are just looking. We are in upper half space. So um, in upper or the upper half plane, and our Hamiltonian. I read, I've written once more this uh, Langmuir Hamiltonian. This here, this is our Langmuir Hamiltonian, and <clears throat> This is invariant under two anti-symplectic involutions. So, so first, first it's it's just mechanical. It's it's a mechanical Hamiltonian. So it's mechanical Hamiltonian. So we have deciphered involution. P goes to minus P under this. It's it's invariant. And then, but then we have another invariance, namely we have um, we can also look at the reflection at the imaginary axis. Uh, so Q goes to minus Q bar, <clears throat> and this reflection at the imaginary axis, this, uh, as I explained before, uh, induces gives us another anti-symplectic involution on the cotangent bundle of upper half plane, and these two commute with each other. <clears throat> and now, so for the Langmuir uh, periodic orbit is this so, so um now now I've, now I've drawn everything again in configuration space and all it has to it always be confused between switch between co configuration phase and phase spaces so this is configuration space <clears throat> so 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 we have here here we have the fixed point set of the of this uh, of the yeah of this reflection at the imaginary axis <clears throat> and conormal bundles so we have to start orthogonal to it so 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 we have, we start here orthogonal and then 
so this is how the zero velocity curves look like for the for the Langmuir problem. So, so the the this is the Hills region for the Langmuir problem. So so we have here at the origin we have singularity, and then the, this uh, this uh, this Hills region those looks kind of like a kidney or so like like this, and so so we we go from from here from from this um, from this uh, Lagrangian so orthogonal to the to the imaginary axis to the to the zero velocity curves, which is another Lagrangian. So, so we, we just if you have just this, this is a quarter of the Longmuir orbit. So this is double break orbit. Then we we use the we use the ref, the Seifert reflection. We go back here. Then we reflect here. We go like this, and then we come back. And so so then then we do forever like this 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 this. So, so then we have the movement of of one of the electrons, and the other the other electron is then is then then you re reflect everything at the um, at the real axis. Okay. So 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 now to 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 uh, prove existence of the Longmuir orbit, so so we have to find we have to find just a quarter. If uh, as soon as we have when we find a quarter of the Longmuir orbit, then we actually have it. And now I, I would like to uh, to this is kind of easy, easy elementary but uh, uh, um, analytic existence proof why this uh, Langmuir orbit actually has to exist. So this is kind of a shooting. So 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 um, we we um, so so we start here at the imaginary axis and we we shoot perpendicular. We shoot perpendicular and then if we if we hit the zero velocity curves, then we are happy. That if, if, we sit, if we hit the zero velocity curves, then we have precisely the double break. That we have the quarter of the Longmore orbit. So, so what we have to make sure is that if, if we start shooting here from, from this imaginary axis, that um, now we, we have a parameter to vary. We can, we can vary this height where we start shooting. Uh, so, so we should find one height where where we actually end up at <clears throat> at the zero velocity curves. So, so that's the question. That does does there exist a height when when and we shoot here perpendicular and we do we hit once the the zero velocity curve? <clears throat> Good. Okay. And yeah. So 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 what do we do? So so we uh, call this set H. So, so I <coughs> I have now just written in. in now it's just in configuration space. I have the two variables, uh, so the x and the y, so the the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So and so so this is determined by this initial condition. Um, so so we have this initial value problem. Um, we um, look at the this uh, in configuration space. It, this this Hamiltonian equation becomes a second order ODE, and so we 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 uh, we are looking uh, for the uh, for this initial value problem, so we start with um, y h at zero is h, x h is zero. The derivative of y h at zero is zero, and the the derivative of x h is is uh, then determined by the energy. <clears throat> and <clears throat> we look for um, then 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 we shoot like this, and um, we wait. So we wait until uh, the the we lost the, the x component of the velocity will will vanish. <clears throat> so so this this always happens because this uh, yeah um, we have in the, in this long way problem we have uh, kind of two forces one one is one is um, one is um, yeah is the center is attracting and then we have some some force which which puts you up. But it just in the y direction. So, so the, but in the the x coordinate at, at one point it has to stop. And then, so we, we call we, we look at this time where we first stop in the in the x direction, <clears throat> and then we we record we record the the derivative of y at this time. And if if the if this derivative is zero. Then we are happy because if this derivative is zero, then we have a, a, the Longmuir orbit. A Longmuir orbit. Because then, then because then we are on the zero velocity curves. The zero. Then, then the x coordinate and the y coordinate are zero. Then, <clears throat> then we have to be here and be happy. Um, so, so, so we have to make sure that that there is one h 
such that uh, the by dot h at the time t h is is zero. And now we we first look at the extreme cases. So so yeah, if, if you compute this, so, so you will see that this height here is is seven over two, and if but if you if you start here at the zero velocity curve and so the electron is here, then what happens? Yeah, it just falls down like this. Uh, so, so we start with zero velocity, but then it gets accelerated and, and then falls down. And then we can do it uh, almost, all, just, as just a little h, where almost close to 7 over 2. Then uh, we, have a, we, we have a little, little velocity. We have a little velocity. Uh, in in the x direction, but not very long, and then uh, but then it will basically uh, will be very close to this orbit, so so it will come back, and then the 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 y derivative here the y derivative here will be uh, negative. <clears throat> so now what, what we want now we will look at the other extreme case. So we start here, uh, very very much, very close to the singularity, very close to the singularity, and um, then the question is, is there maybe the y derivative at th, is this positive? And if, if it's positive, then we are happy because uh, um, then we have, this is a continuous function. So, so, so if, if, it's, if it's negative once and if it's positive once, then by the intermediate value theorem, then for some h in between, it has to be zero. And then if it's zero, then we have this double break orbit. So, so what we have to understand is what happens. What happens if we are, if we are very close to the singularity, and maybe you you understand this much better uh, because because you understand the singularity much better. But um, so, so I, I was kind of confused. But what what happens if you start here because we are very close to the singularity? What do you think happens with this? With this? With this? Uh, do we fall in the singularity or, or or what what happens with this orbit? Um. And now, well, what we do is, as, as, so this becomes very nasty if you're very close to singularity. But what we can do is we blow up the whole coordinates. Uh, so, so instead of being, so, so we make everything much bigger. So, so we change also time. So, so after blowing up the coordinates, um, so, so that actually this is long more the, the the potential in the long more. The Langmuir potential is homogeneous, so, so so we can blow up all the coordinates, and then what we will end up is with a Langmuir problem for energy zero. And so that's that's what, so we have kind of limit orbits. If if if, if we we cannot go really to h to zero, but we but if we go if if we make h to zero and blow up the coordinates. We have a, this orbit makes sense, so we have this limit orbit, and this limit orbit one has to understand. So, so this is now this is now for for the limit orbit. So, so this actually in the old problem we we h went to zero, but then we blew up, and now the, we blow up the whole Hills region. The whole Hills region is the, the kidney. The kidney was 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 for before like this. Now it it blew up, so it becomes an infinite kidney. So, so it's it's just uh, this, uh, uh, yeah. Is is bounded by two by two straight straight lines, and we here maybe may at, at, we can normalize. So we 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 have here height one. So at height one, we uh, shoot we shoot perpendicular. And now now we want to understand what what happens here. Uh, so 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 do we fall, fall down or up or or what 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 does what does happen? And <clears throat> yeah. So, so, so do you have explicit expression of this blow up uh, change? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you, you you just uh, scale the coordinates. Okay. You scale the coordinates and so you cannot the see. So you uh, you scale okay. the coordinates. And, and this is a scale of the time. What, does it have an exponent? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just a scaling factor. Okay. So it's not t to the something; it's one over lambda t. Yeah, right. Yes, 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 yes. So, so, okay. so you, you, yeah, scale, scale everything, yeah. scale everything up. So, so you use here, you use here the homogeneity of the potential. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. This looks like a kind of magic change of for b two, indeed. 
yeah, yeah. I, maybe it's possible. I, I, to... I think that there are probably a lot of connections to to what you're doing. Yes. So, so yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So <clears throat> it's very interesting. And thank you. So maybe maybe you can you can later explain to me what 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 how this fits into the B the B world. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, um, but okay. But what is it kind of elementary? So, so we have this. Um, uh, again, this is the the long way Hamiltonian, and yeah. Now, so actually, actually, Martin Schwinghardt, this is collaborator. He did numerical experiments, and he said, "Oh, oh, this goes up." And I was quite surprised first. <laughs> I didn't quite. So I thought, "Yeah, here is the singularity. Maybe it goes down." But actually, it makes a lot of sense that it goes up. And and what you can do is so so here here we have our Hamiltonian. Now we we change it once more, this Hamiltonian, namely, uh, the geometry is kind of elementary, but, but what we do, what we do is, is we do an inversion at the unit circle. So inversion at the unit circle is, is uh, Q goes to one over Q bar. Huh? So if, if you write this in polar coordinates, R to the I, E I phi, this goes to one over R E I phi. <clears throat> so, so we just, the, the radial coordinate goes to one over radial coordinate. <clears throat> And then, then, then we have uh, the the p. The p we have to the p is now we have to transform as a as a cotangent vector. And so, so for a cotangent vector, it it transforms like this. So p goes to minus a q bar p. Uh, if you so it, it it's 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 contravariant. So, so you you differentiate this, and then you have to take inverse and complex and do again com, uh, co complex conjugation, so so you get the q square. Now and then, then we have an, a new Hamiltonian. So we so we change these coordinates and we also change time once more. So 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 we, we were in the, we had energy zero. So energy zero, we can just multiply this with with another function. And then because energy was zero, this this multiplication has just the effect that we that the the sky the the, the the problem gets reparametrized, and now you 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 plug this in, and what you see what, what comes out is the following Hamiltonian. So it it looks very much like the original one, just that now the 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 uh, denominator the, the denominator is much bigger. It's before it was q, now it's q to the three, and also here in this here we get the q square term. <clears throat> Uh, so, so now after inversion at the unit circle, we have a much heavier potential, <clears throat> and so so we can also write this in polar coordinates. So we, we we write this in polar coordinates, and then then in polar coordinates. So we have this kinetic part, so we have the the p r square, and then we have here the p phi is actually angular momentum. So we have to have this one over r square, and if we have here the 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 Potential, but potential of the inversion at the unit circle, which is now very strong. So we have a very strong force r to the three. <clears throat> Let's call, it, but it's 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 and it's still homogeneous. It's still homogeneous, but now of degree mi minus three. And now, if you have if you have a, such a strong potential, then uh, I think this this was already kind of known to Newton. So if you have a very strong potential, then then you have to fall into the singularity. And uh, so, so we can argue like this. So, so, so we have a Hamilton's equation. You have the the r dot. This is the p r. And now we look at the dot of the p r variable. So um, this is Hamilton equation. But now we have uh, th this potential is, is homogeneous of degree three. So we have three divided by r. And then we have here. So we have here is this additional term this coming with involving the angular momentum but then now we have, now we know the energy is zero so the energy was a uh, potential uh, kinetic plus potential energy so we can replace this by minus the potential energy so we have this three over r so we get we get this factor and now you see now you see that's that's uh, we have here we have a positive term but this wins. This wins. This is this is more negative than this is positive. So so at the end, at the end we have a we have, everything is negative, and uh, so so this means that the 
the the r dot dot the, the acceleration of the radial coordinate this will be negative so so the the orbit just falls down into the singularity like this just like this but now we invert at the unit circle again uh, so this is invert again then we then we are, we get the orbit for a long more this limit orbit for the long more problem and then what you see it does like this so, so it really goes up as as uh, martin has seen numerically but at first in belief but it's it's actually does like this <laughs> and and then then you can prove existence now uh, so we have uh, so we if we do if you're very close here and um, then uh, very close to zero velocity curves then you fall basically down you have the the y derivative here will be negative so if if you have the other limit orbit uh, the, the close to the limit orbit then you go up again so so here we have the y derivative is positive so here is negative here is positive uh, somewhere in between it has to be zero and if it's zero then you, we have to end up at the zero velocity curve so we have a quarter of the namely the, the double break orbit so then we can just go back reflect and so on now we have the Langmuir orbit okay and yeah so so i think that's a good point to stop and yeah and then i yeah thank you and i also wish uh yeah all students uh best for this this is defense <clears throat> good okay. yeah thank you thank you thank you so at this point are there any more questions or comments well, i want to make a comment it's not so clear to me that it's exactly a b singularity it's it's a little bit more complicated not even b2 because you have the square root mm -hmm. but it's a kind of e singularity in the sense of that we studied with jeff and that also cedric has in his thesis but i think it's very interesting like uh, i really would like to put my hands in this example and do stuff so when are you going it's not on the archive yet right uh, no not not yet but, but yeah we, we have to finish it but so hopefully yeah so when yeah. when you when you finish we will try to understand this from our point of what, view what, what, is, what is the singularity <laughs> yeah and uh, how do you i mean like it's super interesting this 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 kind of behavior i mean like very intri intriguing to me it looks like you can compactify and understand it like really as a periodic orbit but of course, from a dynamical point of view, all your studies are are very relevant. Like when it falls to the singularity, it's very interesting. I, I wish that Amade was here to to say something in this direction of the numerics, but he's not. Uh, I will ask him. I mean, once you have the paper out, we will do a reading group uh, in the lab good, to good. understand it. Thank I, you. I have a question. Yeah um like and the question is well I, I i still don't see very much what's like because you have those hills region yeah which are uh well the boundary is like three dimensional no, no but the boundary is one dimensional so so in, in configuration space so, so we have originally we have two electrons okay so we yeah. had a four dimensional configuration space but uh, because of the symmetry i only need one so we have to, we are left to two, okay. and then the, the the hills region is also a closed subset, and the boundaries is just one dimensional. And you, and you have like the singularity at, at and and, and yeah, the singularity. This yeah, <laughs> you probably understand better than I. So, so, so yeah, there is also the singularity. So, so, so this this boundary is kind of at, as a single point. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And do do you have like an idea of like like the geometric structure what could could happen there on the on, on that boundary uh, as a, no as in terms of b b simplex yeah. no it's a knee it's yeah. a be Cedric, uh, you have you have to do all the computations no you are not saved no, no you that, have that's to do all the computations to know what it is yeah right. it looks it's like that... b but maybe it's not b <laughs> 
That's why I'm talking in Barcelona about this because uh, yeah, I also would like to know well, if 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 you know something about if we can say something about this. Single I think that we can understand all all these changes that you mm. did in our from our perspective. Yes, yes. And this orbit, the compactification, it looks very interesting. Right. Yes. Yes. Uh, but I think it's a little bit more complicated than what Cedric did in his thesis. I think it's not even bits and it's singularity. It's an example. It's clearly a very nice example that we would like to understand. So once you put this on the archive, the day after, <laughs> we will start doing all the computations. So, like to to <laughs> physically understand like those the, this this double break orbit that you get. Yes. Like, yes. It's that, that's that goes that goes there and back, but like it does this in finite time, right? Like I mean, it gets yeah. there. It, yeah, it's finite. Finite. It, it, finite time. It's, it's it stops at one point, but just. Yeah. A, but yeah. you always have acceleration, so yeah. it's just yeah. the moment you stop. Yeah. You, you're not yeah. there, stay and yeah. forever. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, well that's in configuration space. space. What I mean, the orbit looks different in phase space. Yeah, in phase space, space it's it's hard to draw. Yeah, you you you, you, mm -hmm. you just have also to to keep account of the velocity. Yeah, and that's and that's where if you saw a B or a B two structure, it would be the the phase space orbit that would look so the configuration yeah. space orbit is is not maybe the best hit right i mean so well, yeah it could be too if, if you think in the polar coordinates in the last formula that he showed uh daniel has to leave okay daniel yeah. see you later then yeah maybe it's v2 with in polar coordinates the last expression that you show us where you have one over r3 one over r2 sines of phi the last Hamiltonian after the blow up. Yeah. Very singular, intriguing. Yeah, singular Hamiltonian is not necessarily the same as a singular symplectic form, right? I mean, so you, you, you know, if, if you can really trade off a singularity in the Hamiltonian for a singularity in the symplectic form, that tells you something, right? I mean, there's some something about the dynamics and it might be interesting. I mean, but that's the yeah. first thing to see. Forget about whether it's B or B2 or something else. Can you? Can you trade off the singularity in the Hamiltonian for a sing singularity in the form? Sometimes you have, Jonathan, sometimes you have both. As we saw exactly. yesterday in the defense of our now. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes you, could have you have both. both. But, 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 you know, can you, is this at all any kind of singular symplectic form? And then if it happens to be one of these B ones, that's great. But if it's something else, that's, you know, maybe even more interesting. So, but, but I don't yeah. even see at the moment that you can, that this is, at all a singular symplectic form but but maybe it is and that would you know that would be interesting yeah so we should maybe meet the big guys uh, together with jonathan victor cedric arnau or what is left from arnau uh the day you put this on the archive we are gonna do a secret meeting <laughs> you are invited to the meeting no secret meeting and let's try to understand the structure yeah that's very interesting. Thanks for the talk. Really. Yeah, thank you. I am more Anastasia. <laughs> Let's maybe try to uh, make a short break and try to get back in six minutes at uh, 20 to 6. Okay. At what time did you say, Anastasia? 20 to 6. Okay, perfect. 20 to 6. So, 6 minutes. Okay. okay good. Good. Perfect. So, Jonathan, you missed yesterday the defense of... I'm going to stop, uh, by the way. It yeah, I was sorry. I, I was just not up to it, but I will try to at least show up for part of Cedric's 